Welcome to our lecture online. Here's our next set and let's see how to handle these types of examples. So we have 16 to the 3 halves. Now we know how to deal with that. We know the number in the denominator is the root and the number in the numerator is the power. So this means the square root of 16 raised to the third power. The square root of 16 is equal to 4. So it's equal to 4 raised to the third power and 4 to the third power is equal to 16. Here we do the same thing. We have the cube root and we have the quantity squared. So we take the cube root of 27 and the whole thing is squared because that's what the numerator is here. And the cube root of 27, that's equal to three squared. Three squared is equal to nine. So that's pretty straightforward. That's how we deal with that. What if we have a negative in front? Well, since there's no parentheses, the exponent does not apply to the negative. So this can be written as negative one times 9 to the 5 halves power and of course the denominator in the exponent that's the root this is the exponent or the power so this is negative 1 times the square root of 9 and the whole thing raised to the fifth power notice how I separate the negative one from everything else the square root of 9 is equal to 3 so that's negative 1 times 3 to the fifth power and 3 to the 5th power, that's 243, so this would be negative 1 times 243, or negative 243. All right, coming up here, notice now the negative is inside the parentheses, but if we take an odd root for that, we don't have to worry. So this can be written as the cube root of a negative 64, and the whole thing raised to the 4th power, and the cube root of negative 64 is equal to negative 4, and that's raised to the fourth power. And negative 4 raised to the fourth power, that's uh, 256. With the negative, no, the negative will get canceled out because it's an even power. So that's equal to 256, and it's positive. All right, how about this again? Oh, now in this case, not again. Here we had a cube root, but here we have a square root of a negative number. That's going to give us some problems. So let's see what that looks like. This is the square root of a negative 25. The whole thing raised to the fifth power. And so right away we would say, and I'm going to rewrite this one a little bit lower because I'm going to need the room. Minus 3 quarters equals, let me erase this portion right here. So I have a little bit more room to work with. All right, so first of all you say, well, that's not a real number. Not a real number. And why can we say that? Because we cannot take the square root of a negative number. However, we could do, write it like this. This is equal to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25 and the whole thing raised to the fifth power. So what's inside the parentheses, I could write as the product of a negative square root, the square root of negative 1 and the square root, and the square root of 25. So this can be written as well, I know that the square root of negative 1 is equal to i, that's the imaginary number, and the square root of 25 is equal to 5. So we end up with i5, or 5i, raised to the fifth power. Now, this can be written as i to the fifth power, and 5 to the fifth power. Now, i to the fifth power ends up being equal to i, and we'll explain how that works later. Don't have to worry about that, so it would be i. 5 to the 5th power, that would be 125, 625, that would be 3,125, or we can write this as 3,125 times i. So later on, when we deal with imaginary numbers, we'll show you how to come up with i to the 5th power, what's that equal to. I'll give you a little bit of a, a hint here. So we can say that i squared is equal to negative 1, i cubed is equal to negative i, i to the 4th power is equal to 1, i to the 5th power is equal to i again, and so forth. So we'll talk about how to do that later when we're dealing with imaginary numbers. And finally, 81 to the minus 3 quarter power, remember the rule, we bring it to the denominator and write it as a positive exponent. So let me come down here a little bit. Well, let's see here. I'm running out of room. So this can be written as 1 over 81 to the positive 3 fourths power, and then we work out the denominator like we do normally. So this is equal to 1 over the fourth root of 81, 
and the whole thing then raised to the third power. So we deal with the denominator just like we do before. The fourth root of 81, that's equal to 3, so that's 1 over 3 to the third power. That would be 1 over 27 as the final result. And that is how it's done.